Hey guys, just here to give you an updated deck profile for my green kid deck. Uh, I have made some changes since I have previously uploaded, and I do think that the list that I have right now is pretty comfortable for me. So I, just for context, my locals seems to have a pretty solid representation for pretty much every deck. There's a slight lean towards uh, Zoro and the mirror that I've noticed but for the most part everything is still present I'm still playing against purple Kaido I'm playing against blurple crocodile I'm playing against blue Doffy I'm playing against law and so my locals is extremely diverse and so I've kind of made changes to my deck in order to kind of deal with a uh, kind of a variety of things and so what I've concocted here is a list that is focusing on certain things that I've mentioned before and I've cut a few cards and I'm going to explain everything and all the changes but to start it all off we have a very familiar four Bonnie and two Momonosuke these are the searchers they're really good um, you always want to be looking for Bonnie in the mid late game because Bonnie will get you pretty much the majority of your deck it's going to get you most of the cards that you're looking for and effectively, I'll come back to these cards later because the, the main deck has changed quite a bit. And so we're going to be talking about how I'm going to be looking for specific cards at some points and other cards at other points. But again, two Momonosuke because the Wano cards I really kind of want to just see in the beginning. It's not like a huge deal uh, whether or not I see Momonosuke or not. I did test a third Momonosuke and what I ended up finding was I very frequently was just keeping him in hand because I was using Doan for other things and I'd just keep him as a 1k counter and so I felt like that's really the utility I'm gonna get I'm just gonna keep the two so that I have six searchers that way my mulligan rate is at least 67% chance when I'm looking for at least a single one cost of these guys uh, in terms of the blockers I there is a slight change to the lineup here so we are again on for Capone because he's a cheap one cost blocker. Nothing special there. Uh, I do want to make a new comment about the killer card. So I said previously that this don't effect to that to attach him to draw a card was kind of niche. I found that the way I've been playing more recently is that this has been coming up a lot more. Getting the free card is actually kind of a big deal and it's enough to convince people to prioritize outing the killer with removal rather than just attacking straight into it because people just don't want to give me free cards which is pretty understandable pretty reasonable but i just wanted to update and note that the killer effect actually comes up a bit more now than i had previously realized uh so i just wanted to make a quick update but i've also added two more blockers into the mix so i've added two three cost shachi so shachi uh, I'm not playing any Penguin. I'm only playing Shachi because Shachi's stat line is slightly better than Penguin's. But he is a 1k counter. He's a 3 cost 4k. Sometimes I've attacked with Shachi by just attaching a Dawn. It's come up like maybe once or twice. But it's not a huge deal. The main thing is that because he's a 3 cost, he is able to buff up my... Uh, he's able to be played off of the 8 cost kit effect. And so I just wanted another three cost in my deck to be able to be played off of the kid because I felt like there wasn't enough. Uh, and you'll notice that the reason I'm leaning into that is actually, spoiler, I've cut the seven cost kid, which I'll get into. And so I just wanted more blockers in order to protect the eight cost kid more often. So that is that. We have a bit more defense here. Again, we have all our 2K counters that we're never gonna actually play. Uh, we have a poo and we have beppo uh there was one instance funny enough where i played a poo and it made a difference but it wasn't because i spent two to play a poo uh a card you'll see later is actually straw sword i was able to trigger play a poo and that enabled me to get rid of a don so the opponent was unable to red hawk me at the time so, I mean, it, just letting you guys know that there was a singular moment where Apu's actual case, uh, actual ability came up. So, if you have to prioritize, do I keep Apu's or Beppo's? I mean, I guess Apu came up for me one time. Beppo, I suppose, now has a target in Shachi in the deck 
if you have a really clogged hand, like you have double Shashi, double Beppo, like maybe it's worth playing the Beppo at that point. Not sure. But it's still never come up for me. The primary usage for these guys is still to just be 2k counters. Apu searchable, Beppo's not. But having the defense is still what I consider to be extremely important in this deck. So what we have here is, again, the Wano package. I'm still on three Nekomamushi. Uh, I do think that the fourth one could be pretty relevant given your matchup. So if you have a lot of green in the mirror, if you have a lot of mirror uh, matches against other green kid players, I think four Nekomamushi could be reasonable because I've noticed that uh, using the Nekomamushi on the Okiku in the green mirror match is a huge swing. The difference is absolutely massive. Uh, in terms of momentum, like who gets to rest the Okiku and out the Okiku first is a huge deal in this matchup. So if you are playing against a lot of green, a lot of law, uh, I think the Neko to four is a pretty reasonable decision. Uh, otherwise, we have Izo, basically one cost more to rest four costs or less, and a 2k counter. So we're playing 12 2k counters, and we also have 12 blockers over here. Um, this is all because I'm leaning a little bit more into the eight cost kid, but... And so I just wanted a, li a little more defense in order to make sure that he's able to play through. And I'll explain a couple of the reasons for the decisions at the end when I can kind of discuss all the cards more easily. But of course we have the four Okiku. This card is absolutely busted. It's a really strong card. Attach a Done, you rest something. It's just, it's so good for getting control over the board early game. It's only a three cost and it's a five and it forces people to like burn their resources and removal on this thing all the time really good card even if it doesn't get to see the light of day it's forcing the opponent to burn burn resources when they otherwise would not and so it's at least gaining you tempo in that sense so we're playing the for all the wano guys over here the main wano package and i'm playing two killer i've cut the two drake from before so part of the reason why I'm leaning into the ACOS kid is because ACOS kid is really strong against blue and I've cut the drakes in favor of some other cards. And so because Drake was good against blue, I decided to lean more into the ACOS kid in order to recompensate for my blue matchup a little bit. Um, but I am keeping the killer because the killer is particularly really potent against red and law and it's all right against green also. So I'm keeping these two killers because he's a low cost card. He triggers sometimes to just kind of play himself. Usually uh, I'm not in a position where I actually want to play him off the trigger. I'll just keep him in the hand just in case I need a counter or in case I need him later. But he's still a useful card I've found and he's cheap enough to where I feel like it's worth playing. Uh, a lot of the car a lot of the way I've curved and crafted this deck is to be very, very value focused. So I've kind of cut down the uh, the overall cost of the deck a lot of cards on average are a bit cheaper than they were before but in terms of the five costs uh, there is a couple changes so I've cut the law from three down to two I have found personally that law is good but I only want to see him at maximum like once a game um, he's still a pretty solid card, so he's a blocker, and he is able to bounce cards back, and you're able to play other ones, so a lot of really strong value plays would be like, you play Momo, you search with Momo, you bounce Momo, and then you play the Okiku, or you play the Izo, or you play the Killer, right? And so, um, you could also do stuff like, I attack with Okiku, and now it's rested, but then you replay the Okiku, so it's now protected. Stuff like that coming up. Law's a very solid card. Um, I did try to cut him completely from the deck at some point, uh, which is when I kind of initially put in the Shashi card, but I did find that there are a lot of awkward moments where I was missing five costs and my deck was curved down a little bit too low. So I decided to re-put the Law back in because he's still a five, uh, five cost 6k body, which is pretty good. His ability is really good for kind of conserving resources, just really efficient in terms of the cost. And he's still a blocker at the end of the day. So we're keeping the law. We've cut the law down one, uh, but he's still a pretty strong card. We're also playing now two Yamato. So this card is really, it is better than I initially expected. So the first time I was playing this card, I was playing it at one just as like a tech option against specific matchups, specifically against purple. 
but I've come around to realize that Yamato is actually just in general a pretty strong card. If you attack with Yamato with for 7k, the opponent must burn two cards from their hand or from their life, and there's really not much choice for them to go around it. Uh, I think establishing that level of card advantage for a 5 cost is pretty impressive, and especially in a lot of matchups, like in red or in the green mirror, the goal generally is going to be to choke the opponent out of resources. Force them on one or two cards every turn, you attack once, they draw one card off the top, and then that's going to be what their resources are going to be looking like for every single turn. That's the goal, that's the hope, and that's what Yamato is going to help you do. So, very strong card, burning resources constantly. It's very rare that the opponent will let this go through, but in order to stop it, you know, they have to be burning resources. So hopefully, with your Wano package, you can be resting all the blockers so that you can really force out the uh, the cards from hand or from the life, because the blockers will kind of disrupt the Yamato, but even if they have a pretty healthy number of blockers, the Yamato is still a 1k counter, so pretty useful regardless. Uh, and the last five costs that we're playing are the two Basil Hawkins. This card is simply just really, really strong. Uh, no counter, unfortunately, but you play him. If they have a lot of blockers, you know, you don't want to play the Yamato. The option to go for it instead will be the Basil Hawkins. You'll go in, you swing at a rested guy, or you swing at leader. And if he gets blocked, or, you know, if his attack against the character is successful, he gets the swing again. He's really useful against uh, the mirror. And when you're dealing with eight cost kids and when you're dealing with a lot of blockers, he's good against red because he's good at board clearing. He's good against, you know, a lot of matchups. The only matchup where he's like kind of subpar is purple. Um, but even then, he's still pretty useful as long as they don't nine cost Kaido him. So, I mean, really, Hawkins is pretty good in about every matchup. The only concern is that he's able to be played around by the opponent just not resting characters because attacking with Hawkins into the leader is a little bit of a commitment. I mean, they take the life, but they get the card. And so, you know, you have to kind of play by ear. But I mean, at the end of the day, useful in most matchups, very strong card. So that's going to be the five costs. Uh, as I've already mentioned, I've cut the seven cost kid and now I'm opting to play three eight cost kids. So seven cost kid right now in this format, I think is good in the mirror and it's good against Kaido. Um, there are not too many times where I'm really wanting to play the seven cause kid, especially because the reason I gave before was that it was a very efficient card in terms of the cost, but ultimately at the end of the day, it's still a seven cost card. And so I'd rather see a lot of other stuff like my five costs when I'm trying to be more efficient with my Dawn usage. And so I've made some changes um, to the event list as a result also, I've cut the Paradise Waterfall in uh, favor of Punk Gibson, and I'm also playing two Straw Swords. So to explain all of this, uh, the eight cast kid, very potent card. He beats blue extremely easily because cards like Dome Flamingo and um, Mihawk are not able to out this card very easily. And because we've upped the number of blockers in our deck from previously, I think guess it was 11 if you I guess you had you, you we lowered the cost of the average blocker in this deck by trading the seven cost kids for Shachi effectively um so there's more usable blockers with the eight cost kid for defense uh and so we've also opted to play two punk Gibson over the paradise waterfalls because this is one card that gives 4k as opposed to a paradise waterfall which is a one dome for 2k and the unrest is really good for cards like seven cost kid and it's okay for eight cost kid but you have to kind of trade life in order to get there um and so the eight cost kid here we're trying to basically protect him we, and so we've made changes to the deck in order to do that uh the straw sword so this is a card that i've been starting to like more and more at first when i was playing this i was only on one copy and it was kind of sacky but it came up a couple of times and I was kind of shocked so I'm playing a second one to make that more consistent um, one of the reasons that it's important to have this straw sword actually with the way my ratios are is because we have the four Bonnie two Momonosuke if I want to be resting cards with 
my deck in general, my Momonosuke is going to be looking for Nekomamushis and Izos, uh, but my Bonnie will actually have no way to find a card that will rest things. And so the Bonnie is able to find the Straw Sword in order to rest cards. So, and the thing about Straw Sword that's really good is it's not restricted by cost of characters. So you're able to rest things that are like Queen, uh, Blocker Laws. You're able to even rest stuff like uh, in the mirror. Something fr that I frequently do is I'll rest Hawkins on the opponent's on the opponent's side. And then I'll attach 3k to leader and I'll swing at Hawkins uh, after straw swing the Hawkins, right? So it's really good for dealing with uh, strong, like, mid-cost threats. It's really good at dealing with a bunch of stuff. I've even, like, straw sorted an opponent's king once just to out the king before it could really start doing damage. And for me, it worked out. Um, but yeah, we have the straw swords here because the Bonnies are able to find the straw sword. Uh, that way, both of our searchers have a strong arsenal that they're able to search from. Like, it makes Bonnie more versatile to add the straw swords in, right? And that's why it's important to have those. And the Punk Gibsons, the secondary effect of this card I wish was better. Um, it's really easy to play around because it's able to rest opponent's cards that are four or less. But the problem is, is that if they just attack with their characters first or their, their lower cost first, then... It's not really a huge deal. Uh, the main thing that this is useful for is resting enemy blockers uh, on the opponent's turn so that when your turn comes back around, you have one less blocker to deal with. But otherwise, it's not a huge deal. I mean, it stops uh, when Zoro has like three vanillas out on the board and then they're attacking with each of them. Like, I guess Punk Gibson protects you from an, an extra attack, which is pretty, uh, pretty useful. But for the most part, you're just playing it because it adds 4k power. Uh, but yeah, so a lot of the changes to the deck, so Straw Sword in particular is good against the mirror and it's good against green, which is the same reason we added, uh, so Straw Sword is good against the mirror and it's good against purple. Uh, Yamato is good against purple. It's pretty good against red and it's not too great in the mirror, not too great against law, but that's why we have the Hawkins. And so we've constructed our deck in a way where we're not necessarily all inning on one strategy, but we have lots of options to deal with lots of different types of decks because that's just how my locals are. So if you really want to, uh, you could make some changes. If you're seeing a lot of the mirror match and you're seeing a lot of purple, I would consider adding back seven cost kid. If you're seeing a lot of like, law and a lot of mirror then i'd suggest adding a fourth nekomamushi um if you're seeing a lot of like blue you know you might want to all in on the eight cost kid even more you might want to re-add the x drakes in but just important to keep in mind the types of meta that you're going to be dealing with at your local but because mine is so diverse um i have opted for a build like this right and so you know, uh, so far it's been doing pretty well for me. I have won a smaller local so far, and I went 2 1 at my other local, but the 2 1 at that local, I lost to purple. Um, but is that a sign I need to tech for more for purple? I would say it's a little bit questionable. Um, that game, I have, when I really think about what happened and I analyze the scenario that happened, he opened Onigashima, good sign. He had four Blast Breath to stop all of my attacks. And other than that, I was extremely satisfied with my defense. There was a board state where he had nine drop Kaido, 10 drop Kaido, uh, qu uh, six drop King and Queen, and the leader attacked with all of them. I had like two life and I still lived because I'm playing all these 2K counters, I'm playing all these blockers, and I had an opportunity to swing for game. Uh, somehow he ended up seeing four blast breath over the course of the game. I mean, and you know, if that happens, then that happens. You just kind of, he has too much defense. What can you do? But you know, uh, for the most part, I think I'm pretty satisfied with my deck. I don't really think my deck is the thing that's making me lose games right now. I think if anything, uh, it's either the opponents are just getting crazy draws or at the very worst, like I'm misplaying. 
So for the types of locals that I have, I'm very satisfied with, uh, with how my deck is. And I'm gonna keep continuing to play with this until probably I get like my fifth or sixth winner card. I'm currently at four or five winner cards. Um, the one I'm actually missing at the moment is the four cost Luffy, which is unfortunate because it's the worst one, but it is what it is. Uh, hopefully I'll get there. I still have a few months, a uh, couple months. I still have a couple months to, to get my last winner card. So I'm not really sweating it too hard. But hopefully uh, this deck profile was insightful for you guys and hopefully it can help you with your builds. If you have any opinions on what you should be doing with with uh, Kareem Kid, I mean, please post them in the comments below. And uh, as for future content, I'm actually planning on making some advice videos for just some basic fundamentals uh, in the game. That's not necessarily geared towards Kid in particular, but just a lot of tips and stuff for players of all skill levels that they can implement and things that all decks can be really trying to do when considering different things. So this was my deck profile. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.